Hey guys, how are you doing today? Um, okay, so I am going to start the broadcast today while I'm waiting for the live viewers to get on. I'm going to start the broadcast today by welcoming the replay viewers. So welcome to the little Facebook live show today. And if you are joining us, you are probably a new homeschooler. So somebody or somebody who's thinking about homeschool, homeschooling. I get a lot of video, um, let's speak, let's think and speak plainly today. I get a lot of people asking me questions who are, um, they're convinced. Something has convicted them to homeschool. Something has caused them to want to homeschool and they're waiting till the end of the year. So they're going to let their kids finish the school year and then they're looking at next year starting to homeschool. And so um, this is for you. This video is for you and we're recording this live. We're going to get some of the mamas who regularly join us to jump on and crowdsource with us and we're going to uh, maybe take some of the information that they give us in the crowdsourcing and put it in a PDF for you to download and we'll put this on the blog later. So I see Tina's here. She's a regular. Bambi's here. She's a regular. Hi, Anna. How are you? Um, okay, so a few things. I'm, I'm about to introduce myself, but just let me warn you right now. This is the door to my backyard and my kids are out there on the trampoline and in a few minutes they're going to realize that uh, I told them they could get on their screens when it was time for me to do this, but they're out there playing, so I didn't call them in. So in a few minutes, they're gonna realize that, oh, they could be on their screens, and they're gonna come like, like a herd of elephants through this back door. Mom, can we get on our screens? And so just to, I just wanna warn you, it's, it's gonna happen. Um, so I'm Pam Barnhill, and I am mother to the three very noisy children outside, and I am a homeschool mom, and I am here today to talk to you a little bit about homeschooling. I have three homeschool podcasts. I have the Homeschool Snapshots podcast, which is where I interview homeschool moms about uh, and dads. I've been cautioned that I'm not doing that one right. I have to include dads too. Um, I interview homeschool moms and dads about their homeschool day and we have dads who listen. And then the Homeschool Solution Show, which is an audio blog. We call it an audio blog of the best homeschool content on the web, streaming straight to your earbuds every Friday. I'm freaking out about this week's episode, guys. It's a great episode, but I got the file from my editor and it's corrupt. I've been trying for two days to get this podcast up in the little uh, service that sends it out to you guys. And finally today I was troubleshooting, I was trying something different, and I finally got a message that the file is corrupt. I don't know if there's gonna be an episode tomorrow or not. So um, I emailed my editor, I'm hoping he can send me another one. Kind of never happened before in like, I've put up what, close to 200 podcasts and it's never happened before. Um, and then I have the Your Morning Basket podcast, which went up this Tuesday. It was awesome. It was not corrupt. Uh, I had Jennifer Dow on this week and we talked about the tension between uh, wanting to get your school done and doing your morning time. Because morning time is something we talk about on that podcast. I see the little crying faces. We will eventually get the podcast out, even if it takes us uh, even if we have to like just skip this week and queue it up later, we will eventually get it out. So, um, okay, so we're going to talk about what happens if you are new to homeschooling. You're thinking about homeschooling. And I want to tell you ladies who are joining me here who are, hey, everybody, everybody's coming and saying hello. Okay, so the ladies who are here with me and you're here to crowdsource. Let me tell you how we're doing this. So this week we are doing what Dawn and I have termed level one of this particular topic. And level one of this topic is for people who, for whatever reason, are brand new to homeschooling. They're not necessarily in an emergency situation where they've got to get into it quickly, like they're pulling their child out of school today and they're gonna start on Monday. But they're in a situation where for whatever reason, uh, it has been put on their hearts to homeschool. They have a few months to prepare. They're maybe preparing to do it for next year, but they have never heard of this before. 
This is never something that was on their radar. They never thought in a million years they would do it. They're not like us crazy people who have three-year-olds and they're like, oh, when do we get to start? You know, and I know there's a lot of us out there like that. That was me. I was ready to start. I had all of those years to prepare and all of that stuff. And so level one is even kind of before teaching from rest. Teaching from rest is kind of, and I don't want to get too much in the semantics of this, but Don and I had a long conversation about it. Teaching from rest is kind of what you discover you need after you get into the thick of it. We're talking about the people who aren't even that far along. So we're going to call teaching from rest level two. All right? They don't even know they are going to have the problems yet that teaching from rest solves and it's a great book it's a great resource but it's a level two resource we are backing up today all the way to level one so just to let you know we're doing level one today and then next week we're going to come back with level two so brand new homeschooler what is the first thing you need to do and the very first thing you need to do is you need to find out what the homeschooling laws are for your state, okay? Um, all right, Kendall, you are gonna have to tell me what C-A-S-C -S is. I need to know what that is. But you are going to um, have to figure out what the laws are for your state. And this is so important to figure out not only the laws, but the homeschooling guidelines, because mine has like one law, and basically it says you can homeschool like this. Um, but you kind of have to dig a little deeper to get into what the guidelines are. And the reason I say this, you would be amazed, ladies, at how many veteran homeschoolers we have in our local groups that come on and ask a question about what are my requirements about this and what are, my, uh, what are you doing to fulfill the new career uh, education requirement for high schoolers. Well, guess what? There is no career education requirement for, high, for homeschool high schoolers in our state. It was something new they implemented in the public school, but it's not for homeschoolers. And these moms who have been homeschooling for years don't know that because they don't know what the state requirements are. So don't only find out what the state requirements are so you can be sure that you're fulfilling them. Figure out what the state requirements are so you can be sure you're not jumping through hoops that you don't have to jump through. That's a big thing. So really understand those state requirements. And so Dawn is gonna put the link for you to the HSLDA website. This is like the easiest, most concise place to find this bit of information for your, uh, for your state requirements. And then the next thing I'm gonna recommend that you do, so number one, find out your requirements. Number two, find your sisters. Find your people. Find homeschoolers who are doing this. And so go and find those people who are local to you, and you can find them on Facebook. Uh, the, back in the day, it was Yahoo groups. There are still some Yahoo groups out there. I think a lot of those groups have moved over to Facebook, but there are still some, so check out Yahoo Groups. Um, I can't even remember my Yahoo Groups password. It's been so long since I've been on Yahoo Groups, and I used to be there all the time. Um, check Facebook, see if there are any Facebook groups local to you. Check through your church. If your church has, you know, if there are people who homeschool at your church, that's a good place to do it. HSLDA, Okay, so if you can't find people locally to you, then you need to search a little wider. Okay, so Dawn and Tina are both telling me those Yahoo groups are still active. Um, search a little wider and go to your state level and find some people on your state level and see if there's a state convention or a state conference, even if it's small. Because these are the people who are homeschooling in your state, and these are the people who understand your requirements best. And you're going to have to find the right person. You're going to have to fill them out. You know, you don't want to be taking advice from the nervous Nelly or finding a mentor who is like completely opposite of your personality if there are things that are optional. Um, but, you know, search out those people who are homeschooling in your state and who can help you 
with some of the stickier wickets of uh, any state requirements that you have. You know, who can give you the lowdown. I know in our co-op, we actually have some people from Florida. Um, and we have one family that's been in Florida ever since our co-op started. And then we have one family that moved from Alabama to, Alabama to Florida a couple years ago. And so she was able to go to this girl and she was able to say, hey, what is up with this portfolio evaluation thing? Because she knew she didn't want to be in an umbrella school in Florida. She wanted to take the portfolio evaluation route. And she was able to say to her, what do I need to do about this? And because the girl lived in Florida and used that method of homeschooling evaluation with the state of Florida and had experience with it, she was able to hook her up with an evaluator and to tell her what kind of things she needed to put in her portfolio. And so she was set and she got that information from another homeschool mom. So find your people and I hope to goodness that you can find somebody who is local to you or you can find uh, somebody, you know, reach out to the state level and see if they can put you in contact with uh, someone who's in your area. And you may not ever be bosom buddies, but they might can mentor you um, in your state requirements. And then you might be bosom buddies. I mean, I started my first homeschool group when my oldest child was four. Um, that was, gosh, Olivia's 11 now, and I'm still like, some of those girls are in our current co-op. So we've been together all these years. So um, that's, that's what you need to do. Um, and so Dawn dropped a couple of links for you to find those, um, a few resources for you online where you can find those state groups. And from the state groups, you can dig down, but get on Facebook, um, you know, and search for those local groups. Okay, the next thing you need are you need a few resources to help you out. Like how do you structure your day? What do you do when you wake up Monday morning? You know, how do you organize your materials and get everything in order? And so we've got a few resources for you that are going to help answer some of those questions. Um, one of them is a little ebook that I wrote called The Confident Homeschooler. And you can get this in two places. If you want a print copy of this book, or actually it's, you can't get a print copy of this book, but if you want to read the book with words on the page in your eyeballs, um, you're going to have to go to Amazon to get it. And it's super inexpensive. It's in the Kindle store. And it's called The Confident Homeschooler. And Dawn's going to drop a link for you. If you don't mind listening, we can save you a couple of dollars because you can listen to the audiobook version of it. And you can get that for free from my website. So if you don't want to have... Um, you know, some people don't like to listen and some people would prefer to listen. So if you don't mind listening, go get the free audiobook. It's 30 minutes long. I read it to you. If you can't stand the sound of my voice or you want to read it yourself, then you can go get it from the Kindle store and it's just a couple of dollars. And if you give me a couple of weeks, I'll put it for sale for 99 cents. So just watch for that. Um, I, it takes me a few days to get. Here they come. Sorry. That's okay. Is it time? Yeah, it's time. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. I told you. I told you it was going to happen. Okay. So, um, where were we at? If you don't want to listen to me read it to you, oh, if you give me a little bit of time, I'll put it on sale for 99 cents, but I can't do it immediately. It takes me a few days, but I can do that for you. Um, let me write myself a note. Um, and let's see. How about we do it March 1st? March 1st, it'll go on sale for five days for 99 cents. Okay. Um, all right, so that's the first thing you can do. The next thing you can do is there is a book that I read years and years ago um, called So You Think You Want to Homeschool, and it's by Lisa Welchel. Remember her, Blair from The Facts of Life? This was the best little book. Now, there are some complaint reviews about it on Amazon that it's composite families. I don't care. It's a good book. It's a really good book because what it does is it illustrates for you a lot of different ways that homeschooling can look in different families. It's actually a lot like the Homeschool Snapshots podcast. And uh, so it's a good book to read if you want to get an idea of different ways that homeschooling can look because there are a lot of different ways that homeschooling can look. So that leads me to my third resource for you. 
check out the Homeschool Snapshots podcast. This is me interviewing homeschoolers about what their days are like. And I ask them a lot of the same questions. And so you get different answers to the exact same questions. You get different viewpoints on the exact same questions. And you come to realize through listening to these little 30 minute podcasts, and, and we try to keep them at 30 minutes, that there are so many different ways to do homeschooling that works for families. So that's my third resource for you. And then my fourth one uh, resource for you is a little book that I got, actually it's not a little book, it's actually, it's kind of a big book. Um, and it's nice and meaty, but it's not overwhelming. And it's called Educating the Wholehearted Child. And it's by Clay and Sally Clarkson. And it's just a really good blending of, this is a way that homeschooling can look at your look in your home that doesn't really even look a whole lot like school meets the type A personality. So there are charts and there are graphs and there are schedules, but none of it is um, overwhelming, I don't think. I don't think. If you open the book and it starts to give you hives, try to get it from the library first. If that kind of information is not helpful to you, then close the book and put it away. Uh, but if you like that sort of thing, if you want some schedules, then you know, go ahead and, and check that one out, Educating the Wholehearted Child. So Dawn is asking, what was the best advice you got when you told people you wanted to homeschool? What did you really need for that first year of homeschooling? Dawn, actually, I think one of the, you actually said this earlier, you said, before you started homeschooling, what did you need to know? Um, was one way to phrase that question. Before you started homeschooling, what did you need to know? Um, so moms who are veteran homeschoolers, put those in the comments for us and we would appreciate it. All right, so, so far we've got find out your laws, find your people, you know, somebody to help you with those requirements um, and to hang out with. And then uh, we've given you some resources to help you out. And then the next thing you need to do is you need to figure out your curriculum. Okay, you need to figure out what curriculum are you going to use. And there are a couple places we want to send you. Kathy Duffy has a website. Um, it's called, I think it's kathyduffy.com, but there's um, a couple of, uh, it's like a, a, she has 102 choices for homeschool curriculum. Don, you're going to have to find the book link for me. Um, Kathy Duffy's 102 picks for homeschool curriculum. And that's the book. And the book in the book, she's chosen what she thinks are her best, um, the best homeschool curriculum out there. These reviews she's done. And um, I have it on good word. I have not met Kathy myself, but I have it on from a good resource, from a good source, that uh, Kathy's reviews are very objective. Um, and she doesn't, you know, she, she's, she's given you the real deal. She's given you a good review. So um, this is a book to start with. She's got the website where there are lots of free reviews on the website, but she doesn't include the full review of her, what she calls her best picks, her 102 picks. For that, you have to buy the book. But the book has some other good tools in there as well. It has some little quizzes in the front to help you get to know maybe what kind of homeschooler might you be. And we're gonna talk a, a lot about that next week in level two, figuring out maybe what kind of homeschooler you are because there's more than one way to do school, but I don't want you to worry about that right now. But Kathy does have a quiz in the front that might help put uh, direct you in the right direction for that. And she has lots of great curriculum reviews in that book and on that website. So that's certainly someplace for you to go, Dawn, we need to have Kathy on the Homeschool uh, Snapshots podcast. We need to make a note of that. Um, so that is a place to go and look for reviews for math programs and language arts programs and things like that. That's a one option. Another option is this thing called Easy Peasy All-in-One Homeschooling. Now, all of you Charlotte Mason mamas out there and all of you unschoolers out there and all of you well-trained mind people out there who might be watching don't gasp 
you know, and think that I'm sending people down the wrong road, what I'm doing is I'm getting people started, okay? Because what you do next year while you're trying to get this whole thing figured out doesn't have to be what you do the year after or five years down the road, okay? I'm getting people started, and easy peasy is a good place to start. It's a good place to get your feet wet while you're learning what your day is gonna look like, how this home th homeschool thing is gonna change your family dynamic, how it's gonna work in your home. Easy peasy online homeschool curriculum is free, it's uh, largely student uh, directed, though if you have a little kid, nothing is ever completely student directed and don't let anyone tell you differently. You have got to sit there with them while they do school. Um, this is your new full-time job um, and just welcome to it. But, um, you know, I guess it's a part-time job. So, um, you've got to um, have a place to start. And easy peasy is a place to start. It's one of Kathy Duffy's top picks. And, oh, Tina. Okay, so Tina uses easy peasy. And you love it, don't you? I don't use it. But it's a good place for people to start. You may decide you love it and you want to stay there. But then you may leave later on. And that's okay, too. Um, the third thing you could do is you could get a box. Okay? Now, I'm going to say get a box with this great, big, fat, blinking light caveat attached to it. And what I mean by get a box is, um, if you're Catholic, you might look at Seton. Does anybody use Calvert these days? That was one way back when I was Protestant. I looked at that. Calvert is school in a box. You could look at that one. Um, what are, Sunlight, if you like literature, your kids like books, you like reading aloud, they like being read to. Sunlight is a great one. If you're a secular family, Bookshark is another school in a box. You guys help me out. What's another school in a box? Um, so school in a box. This is something that you could do. You go online and you say, I want third grade or I want this one. Oh, I, was, I just thought of another company that was a little more hands-on than Sunlight. Um, okay, so the box gets delivered to your house. There's a teacher's guide in there, and it tells you everything that you're supposed to do. Okay, so Sarah Glover is saying Alpha, Omega, um, Sarah Mazarek, hey lady, Beautiful Feet Books. Um, okay, so lots, School in a Box, get it. Here's the deal about School in a Box. This is what you need to know. Do not become a slave to this teacher's guide that you get. Because curriculum developers put way more in their curriculum than they expect you to complete. Because that is what makes it a good value. If you look at the requirements for uh, giving a high school credit and completing, uh, let's say completing a science book to get a high school credit, they recommend that you complete 75% of the science book, and then you can say, my child gets a credit for, let's say, high school biology, because there's more in there than they ever expect you to finish. So do not become a slave to the teacher's guide in this box. Use it as your guide. Dawn, we need uh, Brandy's Don't Be a Slave to the Curriculum, and it's on, um, it's on Teaching Reading with Bob. It's not on Afterthoughts. We need a link to that one. And so shoot for 75% of what's in the box and call it good. Because honestly, that was their intention for you anyway. They don't expect you to do everything that's in there. Okay? So just... Keep that in mind. A box is a great way to start, but don't become a slave to the box because you're gonna get burned out and you're gonna wonder why. Why didn't it, do, why didn't it work for me? What's the problem? It's not you. It's that you became a slave to the box. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to leave you with is kind of, um, oh yes. 
Okay, yeah, you're right. Okay, so Susan Weisbauer has a talk. Um, <laughs> my mom's popping on saying, please leave clear directions when, when you need your mother to teach for you. Oh, you're so funny. Okay, Susan Weisbauer has a talk, Dawn, it's on the Well-Trained Mind website with um, how to teach your kids to become independent learners. And it's not just, it, it is for that purpose, but one of the great things that Susan does in this talk is she talks about what school should look like when you have little kids, she calls them at elbow, okay? And when you have kind of the kids that you're letting them go out a little more on their own, like how many times you should come back and check in on them and how you should set that up and schedule that and then teaching them to become more independent. So she kind of gives you a really great view of what it's gonna look like at each um, kind of developmental milestone. You know, when, how long do you have to sit there with that kid and do every single thing with them? And then when can you start to let them do some stuff independently and how often do you need to check back? And then what's the next step in this process? And then all the way over to how do you get them working independently um, and then she also says that some subjects will always be at elbow. Even with your high schooler, you're going to probably have one or two subjects where you're always going to be at elbow with that high schooler to make sure that they have all the help they need. So that's a great talk. And then the last place I'm going to point you, um, you're sitting there this summer, you've ordered your curriculum, um, or maybe you're getting ready to, and... Um, You've kind of read through some of the other resources. I have a great little talk. I don't want it to overwhelm you, but it's kind of, it's all, level one, almost level two. It's kind of like level one B of this conversation. And it's called uh, the Vision and Goals webinar. And Dawn's gonna drop a link for you to sign up for that one. And it's a 30 minute webinar. And in that web webinar, I talk about starting to create a vision for your homeschool. What do you want your homeschool to look like? And what goals do you wanna set for your kids? And we give you like a little workbook that you can download with it to help you write your vision. Now, the vision you write now might not be your vision forever and ever, amen. You're probably gonna change as you go along, but it gives you a good place to get started. So just think about the next year. What do I want the vision of our homeschool to look like just for this next year? What goals do I want to set for my kids just for this next year? And goals are always short term anyway. And we give you some worksheets and some forms to fill out that you can use to help you kind of figure out where you're going. Because having a plan in place of where you're going before you get started keeps you from throwing off your math curriculum in the middle of winter or buying a bunch of new stuff in February uh, or changing up everything just because you're having a bad week. You can go back to your vision and you can say, wait a second, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. These things fit my vision. We're gonna keep working through and see if we can figure out what's wrong somewhere else. So that's kind of moving into the next level that we're gonna talk about next week. What do you do when you've been homeschooling a year? You're starting to feel a little more confident and you've been hearing all of these things about Charlotte Mason or John Holt or uh, Plato or Susan Wise Bauer or Classical Conversations. You know, where do we go from here now that we have a year under our belt and we're wanting to kind of stretch our wings as homeschoolers? We've survived the first year and where do we go from here? Um, but right now, I want to get you to survive that first year. That's the big, most important thing. So you can find us here on Facebook at Homeschool Solutions with Pam Barnhill. Um, we really try to tickle your funny bone here and give you things that make you go, hmm, and then interspersed with that, we put really helpful homeschool things, but it's a good mix of all of that. Um, and then also on pambarnhill.com, you can find all the podcasts there and helpful information, some homeschool planning forms that are free to download. Um, I have a homeschool planning kit. We're going to talk more about that next week, but um, lots of helpful tools for you over there. And there's a great start here page on that website as well. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. Continue to ask your questions. 
down here in the comments and uh, Don and I will be back to answer some of those questions for you and some of these other mamas who join us every Thursday afternoon at 2.45 Central, they'll pop in and answer some questions as well. So thanks so much, you guys. I hope you found it helpful. We'll be back next week with level two. And you guys have an awesome, awesome weekend.